Hey guys, it's Sydney joining in on the Worst of the Riot podcast this morning. We've had some uh, some technical difficulties, you could say, this morning, which is why you're now hearing my voice instead of Obadiah and Nikki's. Hopefully it'll be fixed tomorrow so you won't have to hear me again. But the Riot, they talked about quite a few things today. They talked about some closed roller coasters. They discussed coronavirus as they usually do. They talked some Hello Kitty melons, Labor Day and traveling, some weight loss tactics and more so stick around enjoy the podcast thank you so much for listening and have a great day the definition of insanity is putting the riot on again and again and expecting a better result it's the worst of the riot on radio U. this morning i had a revelation you did yeah it was about 30 seconds ago and uh why delay let's get right into it let's start the week Having our eyes opened (laughs) to the truth. So we're supposed to analyze this revelation? No, no, you're supposed to catch the vision of it. We're supposed to accept it? Yeah, because once you see it, you're going to get it. Okay. okay? You ever signed up for a streaming service? Of course you have. (laughs) It really is a question of how many of you signed up for, (laughs) not if you have. All right, right? so you signed up for a streaming service. Then you cancel it. Uh Uh-huh. And then you begin to realize that all streaming services are... Bad relationships. And when you end that bad relationship, what do they do? They either stalk you constantly or they start trying to live their best life. But it's not enough for them to live their best life and be satisfied with that. They need to make sure that you're seeing them live their best life. So instead of just doing their thing, they start emailing you, look what you're missing. Uh Uh-huh. All the good stuff. Like, look at what you could have had. You could have had all this, but instead, we weren't good enough for you. Is this HBO Max? Maybe. Is that the one? How do you know? Is that the bad relationship? I don't know. Because I had to unsubscribe because I was tired of seeing all of them. Right. I, I will say... That I just got a what you're missing email. in the relationship email. And when, I, when I saw that email, I was just like, this is right, right here. This is a bad relationship. This is a I'm immediately look, look at all the things I'm doing. Look at the great life I have. Look at me flooding Facebook with all these photos. You better be seeing my Insta stories about all the hot people I'm with now that I'm not with you. That's why Are you when seeing you... it? Did you notice it? I hope you're looking. That's why when you break up, you're supposed to cut it. Like, you're not supposed to still be a part of the email blast. I just unsubscribed. You can't You can't still be a part of that world because then it's going to just be a toxic breakup. You got to unfollow that relationship. You got to get all the way out. So you're out now? Yeah, I mean, I think so. <laughs> but that I probably just unsubscribed from the daily email. There's also a <laughs> weekly email and You'll a monthly email. You'll never really be off of it. And so, I mean, yes, you did unsubscribe from that list <laughs> you didn't, but you didn't unsubscribe from every list well you didn't unsubscribe from the hbo max vacation they're gone and now you're seeing what they what you get to miss while they're on this wonderful vacation list i don't want to silence you for 30 days i went all the way out <laughs> i went well, all the way out let's see if this helps you toxic relationships that's what every streaming service is it starts out too fast too quick you get in <laughs> it's cheaper <laughs> they start raising the price man it, it's no good it's no good for any of us you thought they were bad live well just wait until you hear this the worst of the riot podcast with obadiah and nikki this might be the saddest article of the day might as well get it out of the way kind of early did you know that yesterday was National Roller Coaster Day? Oh, I did not. I did not know that either. And so the people at the Orange County Register, they are a newspaper Aww. in Orange County, California. They put together the top 50 roller coasters you can't ride this year. Well, don't make the list sad. <laughs> It's so sad. I, I love it so much. Um, and so just to be clear... Um, <laughs> now you can go to most theme parks. Are they just saying around the world? Uh, no, they they actually were saying that like, hey, um, not all of these are inaccessible. It was just they're like we're being funny, and we're also funny. just meaning you can't you like travel to a lot of the places. Exactly. So unless it's in your area, um, it'd be harder to get to. So their top five were the Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England, 
the Intimidator 305. Is that like a RoboCop villain? Maybe. At King's Dominion in Virginia. The Twisted Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia. Uh, number two, Superman at Six Flags New England in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. And the number one roller coaster, according to the Orange County Register, that you cannot ride this year is the Fury 325 at Carowinds in North Carolina. I feel like this is not entirely a fair list because I'll tell you who doesn't. Well, no, maybe it's just that these are all clo- Maybe these really are all closed parks because there's not a single Cedar, Cedar Point, Point yeah. on here. And Cedar Point is open. I had some friends that went to Cedar Point in um, Sandusky, Ohio. Yeah. Uh, last week. So it seems like then this actually Maybe is a it list. it really is a list of closed See, we were places. wrong. They are closed. They're actually closed. <laughs> Not just close to your heart or hard to get to. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fascinating. 25% of the uh, th- uh, theme parks, uh, amusement parks in the United States are closed. Oh, all right. 25%. That's a good amount. There's so many more than you think there are. I Okay, I've got, what is it, Philo, the uh, like online cable, whatever. And I keep seeing ads for these amusement parks I've never heard of. Just smaller ones? They're like, come to this whatever, and it's twenty nine ninety nine, And you're like, what? What is that? <laughs> but it's just smaller ones. I guess. And it's like, who's going to these places? Where do they, ex- what? I don't know. There's smaller towns. I mean, there are towns everywhere. You got to, there's, we're just used to the main ones. Right. But I mean, that could be, you don't want to keep, that's our new YouTube channel. We're going <laughs> we to travel to all the, the small, ones. small to mid range <laughs> amusement parks around the United States. Well, it'd be interesting to look at the list and actually then go look up the theme parks that are featured on it that aren't open yet. Yeah. So, well. And may never be open again. Oh, they don't want you to say that. Well, I feel like it, it lives in the spirit of the article. No, <laughs> I don't think it does. 50 coasters you can't ride. Ever. Maybe ever. <laughs> Gosh, that's sad. When you put it that way, even though you're right, probably some of them won't come back. Hopefully they all come back. If it's louder than it has to be and way worse than it has any right to be, it must be the worst of the riot. On Radio U. I will say, continuing my theme from last week, I watched Midway, which was the World War II movie from last year. Yeah. And so then, this weekend, I watched 1917. Did you the like it? The World War I movie from last year. Everybody, when that came out, thought it was great. Uh, it is it is good. It's, you know what? There's two kinds of war movies. They're the kinds that you walk away and you're like, I don't know. War seems kind of (laughs) cool. And then there's the kind where you walk away and you're like, I don't want us to go to war ever, ever, ever. So where did that one lie? 1917 is uh, never, ever. Gotcha. Kind of movie. Midway is like a, I don't know, sounds cool. Is it because Midway added a bit of humor like you were saying? Uh, It's not so much... It's just how it's all about the tone and how it ends and how, you know, the guy at the end kind of gives him a little speech about not letting people down. And then you get that thing at the end where they're like, everybody, this guy got a medal and this guy got a medal and this guy got a medal. And you're like, oh, and in the first few minutes of 1917, one of the guys is like, I want a medal. The guy's like, "Ah, it's nothing but 10. It's worthless. So then there went that. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Yeah. So, uh, and I think, and if you read the histories of World War One, oh gosh, man, it's awful. And so it, but the thing that was interesting was seeing it brought to life uh, in color, basically. Uh, I never, no, I haven't seen the, uh, the one of all the restored footage that Peter Jackson did. I still haven't watched that yet, but 1917 was, it was pretty good, but I'll tell you, it's not a, it's not a feel good movie. Sure. Uh, so I wouldn't say it was for the faint of heart. But look at you. You're watching current movies. Or are you going to tell well, me you also spent some time watching classic movies? No, no, no. No. Like, I that that was it. That and some of the Umbrella Academy uh, season two. Look. Season you're, two. You're, that released that, this year. That means you went through one already. Yay. Wow. <laughs> wow. Obi tends to watch some older stuff. Um, I've, been, I've been on a real classic movie kick. Yes, you have. But it feels like you're, it is not bad, but it feels like you're coming out of that a bit. Maybe I am. Maybe I go running back into it next weekend. Who All knows? the current stuff. We'll see. Who knows? But I, I did it, Nikki. Woo. Good job. <laughs> now I just need to make a list of other things that, like, what what did I miss last year? You know, and maybe branch out of the war movies. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Those, I don't, 
I think it has to do with I've been listening to a history podcast. Uh, that I think, hasn't been helping. I think that has got me stuck in those places. Reading that Churchill autobiography, but I think I think I might be done with that too. We'll find something a little, a little bit more lighthearted for you. <laughs> you're reading about the Boer War, and after a while, you're like, "Yeah, I'm bored." <laughs> like, what am I doing? Like, what? It, what is this? Well, still, if you want to text Obi anytime, you have a recommendation or something. If you watched over the weekend that you want us to get into, just let us know. Yeah, would love to hear from you because you know. We're here. Everything you love about the riot, plus a handy dandy fast forward option. This is the worst of the riot podcast. The USPS, Nikki's favorite place. Actually, when it comes to delivery, it's not because whenever something comes that way, it's still sometimes the following day after the day that you think it should be delivered. No, I love when they they mark it delivered and you don't have it. You get that a lot all the time. Obi's even stayed at home and then they just go right on by. (laughs) And then what I I'll watch them drive past my house delivering nothing, and then about five or ten minutes later, I'll get a notification that it's been delivered. Which, by the way, it hasn't. Or that you weren't home. Yeah, I love that one. Not home, and it's like, oh, somebody just didn't want to get out and deliver it. Basically. That, that's what that is. So out of all of them, the Postal Service is probably my least favorite when something gets delivered that way. Yeah, that being said, Nikki, the United States Postal Service, they need your help. They do? After everything you've just said, are you willing to help the post office? Uh, What are we doing to help them? Uh, Well, what if you just paid more? Well, that's not... (laughs) It will help them? Is there any other option? (laughs) Can we do anything else? Maybe you could buy some of their merch. Yeah, okay. Like a shirt or something? Yeah, yeah. If if all the proceeds go to help the Postal Service. They have filed for a temporary price increase. That price increase will be uh, active from October 18th to December 27th. So that would be the price of mailing items. The yes. stamp stuff goes up. Yeah. What I don't have here is th- like what exactly the prices are going to, but they say that uh, it will increase the price of priority mail, first class package service. Uh, priority mail gets listed. Oh, priority mail express, mm-hmm. uh, parcel return service, and parcel select. Well, that won't help us. I don't mail anything that way. I don't mail anything. <laughs> Unless it's like a return, which is usually through FedEx, I'm not doing it. <laughs> or a Coles drop-off location. You st- Obi's done that. <laughs> I have. For real. So I try not to buy anything that would require me to ship and mail it. Yeah. You just send it there already. So I don't know if we would be the best help. Here's what I see. I see that they're like, hey, we're raising prices. Oh, no. But this becomes the excuse where Amazon has to be like, well, we have to raise prices because the post office has... You're like, yeah, but you guys don't use them. Oh, well, got to raise the prices. <laughs> what? What? You're not supposed to notice that. Got to pass the factory direct savings on to you. You would be right with your correct statement of maybe if the Postal Service came out with like a merch line or something. You know, like KFC came out with the Crocs and this does that. Like they need to come viral with some yeah. sort of uh, another option outside of expecting us to mail packages. They need to work on making the post office seem cool and slightly anti-establishment. Pretty much. You and know, then so, we'd be all over it. Like, why don't they just come out and say, don't use their service? And then I might want to use the service. The post office doesn't want you. We don't want you to come in here <laughs> yeah. and don't mail a freaking package. Perfect. Go to UPS and wear those stupid looking brown shorts for all we care. They have to Boom. develop that, Boom. that negative attitude. That's is right. what's so, you know, like. Negativity is the new positivity. It is. Is, and, and that's attractive. It is. Okay, so that's going to get them some business. By telling me you don't want me, now I want you. Suddenly, I have to mail items I never thought I'd buy to mail in the first place. Man, I'm going down there and getting a, I'm getting a postal stamp. <laughs> to do what with? I'm buying it doesn't postage. matter. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. All right, so the Postal Service, I did see them trending a lot I recently. waited 45 minutes. They wouldn't even talk to me. I love it so much. Love it. You, I love it so much. You're just going in to wait in line. <laughs> they might already be doing that part. Maybe the riot would sound better if they spent less time improving their lives at their gym. That was sarcasm. It's the riot on Radio U. All right. Costa Mesa, California, Saturday. There's a protest. We're all, we're just all out there protesting. Uh, they, 
there are things that seem like they're worth protesting. And I'm not going to lie. Sometimes it just seems like, what are we doing? So a group of women gathered outside the Mother's Market and Kitchen in Costa Mesa to protest their mask policy. Mm -hmm. So they said, for you to come in, you have to wear a mask. And these were anti-maskers. They got, we got a name now. Anti-vaxxers, anti-maskers, just put anti-everything. Anti- yeah, you just put anti in front of it and it works out. So the owners at Mother's Market and Kitchen were like, oh, oh, there's a... Mu-. Okay, so they locked the doors. So they could, no one could so get in the store? no one could get in the store. Which, you know what? Again, I'm not there. there I don't know all the circumstances, but that seems kind of reasonable. You're just like, ignore them. Maybe they'll go away. Well, for the safety of the people inside the store or the employees, absolutely. So the people Not outside- if you just wanted to grab something real quick. And that's a real bummer. You're right behind the anti-people. Hey, do me a favor. I want you to run down to Mother's and get some maple syrup. <laughs> just grab something, please. Just, a, just quick. Why'd you come back with this uh, Albertson's trash? Like, I just couldn't get in. It's the best I could do. Uh, so they had they had this big protest, and I love this so much. There's a woman outside screaming that Mother's Market is committing war crimes mm-hmm. by not allowing people access to food. They're committing war crimes in the United States, they screamed. This tells me that we've never, we have it a little too good. That's the problem. Like, we, you only say that Mother's Market and Costa Mesa locking the door because of their public health concerns. You only call that a war crime when you've never witnessed one. That's, that's how that happens. So in a lot that's of what ways, that says. <laughs> yeah. So in a lot of ways, you screaming war crime at that makes me feel less sorry for you because it tells me that you've never been where one of those has happened. So life's pretty good for you right now. But they can't get in the store. Well, there's a <laughs> lot of stores around there that are open. Uh, we're not at the UN ration line huh, where they're forcing you to do terrible things in order to get some food. That's a war crime. Sure. Um, Not, I can't get into Mother's in Costa Mesa because they want me to wear this mask. Who cares? Can't you even just do the pickup at the curb and then the spot? Can't you just do that? Shut up. It's an honest question. It is an honest question. There's other ways. Order online. I know you're wanting to get in because you want to just make a thing about it. And I see plenty of people do that. But there are other alternatives to where you can still get your food without making a big thing. Yeah. Am I being too honest? Is, Is my take on this story too honest? I don't think so. I'm more interested when I see these protests and it's like, well, it's a large protest. And then you go back and look and see, was it just a couple of... How many people really were there? How many people were actually at Mother's causing a problem? Okay, well, in fairness... Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) What do you see? No, I can't say it out loud. I can't. (laughs) I, I see... It looks like there's probably a solid, I don't know, 20, 25 people there. But, you know, Nikki... In relation to how many people can fit inside Mother's Market, that's a pretty big crowd. That's a big day if that if they all went in. <laughs> but they're not going to because they have to wear a mask. Yeah, you just you don't want to be a part of any. Um, I don't know. Again, you're just going to try to shop, and whenever you see a protest, and you're like, you that's not what you were doing that day. <laughs> I it, Modern communication, exaggeration is killing us. I just can't take people seriously. If you tell me that you're really upset about the mask policy, you know what? Maybe I'll listen to you. If you tell me that they're committing a war crime, Too far. We're, we're done. This conversation is over before it even started. Yeah! <laughs> you were one of the lucky few who missed the riot when they were live. Yet here you are. I also like to live dangerously. This is the worst of the riot podcast. Okay, I told you that we were going to look at this article about the six questions that you need to ask yourself. And here's the quote, to identify your most important tasks. Mm -hmm. So that way, when you sit down and decide what you're going to do today, you pick the important stuff. You you know, the other stuff kind of falls away. You ready? Yeah. So step one is to ask yourself, what are the two to three most important things I need to do today? Um, it says in the article that I you have six steps for me to figure that out. <laughs> they got to in the first so, one. Like in the first step, if <laughs> it, this seems like a one step process. Well, no, you let's, just let's ask hear yourself, the rest out. <laughs> you ask yourself, what are the two to three most important things? Number two, look at each task and ask, what is this task's value? Mm-hmm. 
So, you know, is it valuable? Is it not valuable? Three, is it related to your goals? Okay. I don't even have any of those. Well, then we don't have to so do I guess, this. Well, I guess we're going to have to set some goals first. If not, oh, so you have to do a whole other thing. Yeah, it's like you look up I, a list pro- on setting goals. It's probably a whole other article. Oh, now like, we just now it's too much. Six steps for setting goals. One, what are your goals? <laughs> All right. Let's just say pass on that one. All right. Number four. Is it a task that you've been thinking about for some time? It just seems like this is the same thing. You're just supposed to analyze each one. So uh, this says if there's something on your list that you can't stop thinking about, it's probably Something you should do. Yeah. Uh, At the very least, you want to get rid of it so you can stop (laughs) thinking about it. They use the word thinking when it's really the word worrying. Okay. (laughs) Anxious about. You know what, Nikki? Worrying is a kind of thinking. Making yourself sick. All right. Have you been putting it off for too long is question five. That's everything. That's why I have a list. Put it on the list so I don't have to do it. And then the final question that you have to ask yourself when determining your most important (laughs) tasks. To make your... um, To make your to-do list for the day powerful. And wow, all that crap. Uh, Six, is it a task that will free you up to work on your real most important tasks? Another list? Is that another list we're supposed to be making? Well, remember, you're supposed to ask yourself what are the important tasks so you can get to the important tasks. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if this has been very helpful. I don't feel like it's been very helpful at all. Good. <laughs> we're not the only ones then. And, uh, well, you know, I, I don't know. Like, if you ask me what's the most important stuff I have to get done today, I have no idea. This, I guess? Well, yeah. Are they even counting work stuff or is it... Outside of your normal day-to-day stuff, the extra stuff you need to do. Well, you know, what if, like, some people are freelancers. What if you're a freelancer and you're trying to figure out, like, okay, as a freelancer, what's the, what are the most important things I need to get done? Because I don't have a boss breathing down my neck. Could be. Telling me how to live my life. So you got to be your own boss. Six steps to being your own boss. <laughs> Here's Here another my, six steps. Here comes my new article. I'm writing that. Well, I'll work on that. But if you it, only if it's important, then you then add it to your uh, things to do list. Step one: ask yourself, "Am I the boss of me?" <laughs> it's going to be great. We could really go down a rabbit hole of making these lists I if could, we wanted to. I could churn out these articles, man. Churn them out. <laughs> We would give the riot flowers to show our appreciation, but Obadiah is probably allergic. What isn't he allergic to? This is the riot on Radio U. Some of you are already back in school. Some of you are not. And, you know, it can be confusing out there. There's such a disparity in information. I've got a friend of mine who started his freshman year. uh, Well, I think he starts on Wednesday. His move-in day was last Saturday. Yeah. He uh, not like this like three days ago, but, the but week like before? ten days ago or something mm-hmm. like that. So they send him all this stuff that is like, once you move in, do not go home, do not this, do not that, whatever. So he gets there, he moves in, and his RA says, "No, just go home. There's nothing happening here for like two weeks. Like you're moved in, just go home." So you could get a um, <laughs> different. Different things from different people. <laughs> people are telling you different things. Uh, but well, I think we're also getting news from, you know, schools that might, it's not like how it is when you're actually there. Right. So that makes this, uh, well, let's just say double check. We've got Westmore High School. This is in Moore, Oklahoma. Uh, a student went to school knowing that they had COVID-19. Oh, really? They were just asymptomatic. Oh. So they found out they had it. And then they were like, I'm fine. And they still went? Still went. Not supposed to. Not supposed to. So they didn't think that they needed to go. Like, they took a couple days off. Mm -hmm. But they're like, I feel fine, so I'm just going to go. Didn't take the full 14 days of quarantine that they were supposed to. And now they've had to shut down multiple classrooms and et cetera, et cetera, because this person went back before they were actually supposed to. So you're supposed to wait 14 days. You don't really then like you have to, to have another test at the end. You don't really like to call people out, but way to go. <laughs> you know, like you weren't doing it right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Which I would think if you would go and get the test done and it, it shows positive, like you're, you're you're pretty much told to at that point. And, and so, you know, like he probably knew what he was doing. But Nikki, he just felt fine. Don't you see? It's conflicting information. He's probably like, I don't have any symptoms. I'm probably fine. For all we know, his mom probably made him go. You're not even sick. Get out. Not supposed to. We don't know. 14 days. But it looks like 17 people came into contact with him. 
uh, and they all now have to quarantine mm. from home. And to be clear, like we don't know if any of those people that came in contact with them, if any of them have it. Yeah. It's just that because you've had contact, direct contact. In fact, the CDC says, I've got a friend of mine that works for a company and this is what they've done. According to the CDC, according to him. So I didn't read it myself. <laughs> But we're close. Okay. Uh, he said that they tell you, like, if you spend a cumulative amount of 15 minutes with that person, you're supposed to quarantine for two weeks. For two weeks? You don't even need to go take the test. You're just supposed to, to go weeks. quarantine for that And then if you start to have symptoms, and then, then you, you go, go take yeah. the test. Yeah. Aw. So. Well, uh, let's, I mean, most of us probably would have new to take the 14 days but but he didn't better to remind again that even if you don't show the symptoms you're supposed to we're providing a public service right now. i think so this is a public service <laughs> i did read we'll have to find it the biggest fear i think a lot of people have right now is you know if you go in contact with someone then you have to go get the test done and the test is most unpleasant for many, many, many people. But if you look it up, there was something about over the weekend. the oh, about the saliva thing? Yeah, the NBA yeah. players have been taking and testing a saliva version mm-hmm. um, that then they want to start doing for NFL players and stuff. Um, and I, when I was reading that, I was like, oh, that would make it's a much quicker, faster process. You No, I, they need to have the whole thing. <laughs> You don't. What if you don't have to anymore? No, I they mean, need how to much jam that be... thing up there and no. poke the bottom of their eyeballs so that people take it seriously. Take it seriously. <laughs> and if they're just swabbing, uh, you know, your saliva, that's not it. I'm just telling you right now. What do I have to do to not take the test again? I'll do that. Wear a mask. <laughs> fine. The riot really wanted to do this live, but now they can play video games and eat rice cakes instead. This is the worst of the Riot Podcast. So Nikki was talking earlier about the COVID spit test. You know, can they figure out if you have COVID-19 from a saliva test? And here's what I found out. As of Saturday, the FDA has approved this test that was developed. They developed it down at the school. Now, is it Yale who was working on it? Yale! (laughs) Just... (laughs) The Yale School of Public Health yeah. has developed this, and so it's less invasive, a.k.a. they just put a little something in your mouth. I'm I think t- everybody I'm would just, be up for that, right, instead of the up your nose? I'm just going to tell you Both right sides. now, every time you've seen, like, the governor got the test or whatever, and they just, like, put a little something in their nose and it's no big deal, it's not like that. <laughs> it's not, they're not actually getting the real test. <laughs> I've had nasal or, uh, like, sinus surgery. And I thought when I had to have the COVID test that, you know, when they put the little thing up there, I was like, oh, I've had this done before. I know it's unpleasant, but it'll be fine. It's so much worse than what they did when I had surgery. I didn't know what I was in for. And then you didn't realize they go to the other. They go to, to the, the other, other side, side and do it one more time. Yes. So I, when I saw the saliva one, I thought, well, that would be a much better process, especially if this could be a faster turnaround. Much with faster. more accurate results. Because the faster turnaround ones are the ones that seem to be the results that can come back incorrect the most these are not they are saying that so far this is as accurate as as the other tests they're not saying it's more accurate uh but because it's so much less invasive and cheaper to do you could you don't mind going back to get tested again you could have multiple tests and it would be inexpensive not as invasive and results don't take as long to get back either so there's a chemical reagent that is expensive which happens currently in the uh, covid test they're able to skip this step with this new testing process, and they can do, I think they were saying something like 90 samples in about three hours wow. in a lab. So the turnaround time is very fast. So the NBA bubble, you know, the players that have been in the bubble at Disney, at ESPN for their I games. like a player <laughs> in a bubble. So the players there have to get tested frequently, and so they've been using the saliva test to test a yeah. lot of them uh, as the test to then be able to tell if this is something everybody else can do. All right, well, that's great. That means that one player can get out to the strip club more often. Well, that was someone who left the bubble a few weeks ago and he got caught because he 
was was somewhere he wasn't supposed to. They're supposed to stay close to the bubble. Stay in the bubble. (laughs) So according to Yale, they have made this an open source test. So they are basically publishing the info. Here's how you do it. Here's what we did. And they're saying essentially any lab can do this. Now, to be clear, that doesn't mean that your lab is doing it. It just means that they maybe could. Because if you so, have to go get a test done today, it's not like we're saying, well, where do I go for this one? It doesn't mean that's it's readily available yet. Might might take a little while. Yeah, but that was good to see, though, that because, again, people, I think it, it's a hard time to find a location still to get a COVID test. And it's still a quite the experience that um, you're supposed to quarantine anyways, but this would make it. Uh, easier to have the test done and then retest at the end. I read that, uh, like the COVID test I had, that it probably punctured my blood brain barrier, like the membrane, <laughs> and it's going to make me more docile and Is that what you read? more open to suggestion. <laughs> In the future. So that way I won't question authority. That's what I read. Okay. Must could be true. Be, could be. <laughs> and, hey, somebody tell me what to do. I'm open to suggestion now. I just like the saliva test to be done soon. So. Sure. I'll spit on you. <laughs> Is it healthy eating so many snacks, chips, and Oreos every single morning? No, of course not. But they do it for you. Not too many guys got their stomach for this line of work. That's real love. It's the riot on Radio U. I thought that we had seen every possible piece of merchandising. And I mean, I've seen some things that I will not mention on this show that you're like, man, what are we doing? <laughs> With merch. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I was wrong. There is yet another undiscovered country of merch that we have only yet begun to journey through. This, of course, being uh, Collector's Edition Melons. (laughs) I think it looks cute. (laughs) So in Japan, you can buy a Hello Kitty melon. Yeah. What they do is when the melon is new, they take it and uh, when it's a little baby melon, just a little one. And then they carve Hello Kitty's face in it. Then they let the melon grow. So when it's still green, it, they'll carve it in. Mm-hmm. And then the outer skin, it like for this particular melon, has like a, a net sort of thing. That grows over the green part and the Hello Kitty face is carved in there. It's right there. It's <laughs> and it comes in a really cool you. box. It looks neat. It. It's something. Yeah, and it's cheaper. Like, if you go to Japan, there are there's a premium market for fruit. Just fruit in general. Fruit in yes. general where it's impressive. It supposedly tastes so much different, so much better than what we can get yeah, where it's like, I hey, don't know. it's been off the vine or whatever for like eight months, and you just you just don't know how long it sits around. Uh, but for this, you can get one That's of these. That's why you got to shop local, Nikki. Pretty much. Think global, but shop, shop local. local. You can buy the Hello Kitty melon for $49, which is actually pretty affordable for a melon. No, no, no. Okay, that's affordable for a melon in Japan. In Japan. Because, heads up. <laughs> a premium one. That's absurd. It's cantaloupe, for crying out loud. It's like the free melon, you know, you get as the side dish with the honeydew. It's the ones that you're not crazy about. That's, now, that's the one. In fairness to cantaloupe, I will tell you that when you get that canned, like, whatever crap they throw you, it sucks. If you get a fresh, a fresh, somewhat locally grown cantaloupe, they are delicious. Well, this one looks good, too, and it's got Hello Kitty. So it's $49. It is limited. There's only 300 melons. Yeah, when I... three 300 melons. That's it. But think about this. That's either... That's several people, I assume, working together who had to carve Hello Kitty's face into little baby melons over and over again. It's a heck of a world we live in, guys. This is what they do, and this, I think I think these come out each year, so it's it's hard to you know hard to get a hold of them. Thing that's kind of fascinating about it to me is when you think about it, this means that, like, I don't know where you are financially, but personally, like, I have a very limited amount of what I would call discretionary income yeah. to just do what I want to do with. There are people that just have money laying around that they're just looking for stuff to buy. Yeah. And people are like, I don't know. What if we carved a face in this melon? Well, and there are people that are like, oh, my gosh, finally. I want to spend money on that. Think of it this way, though. Imagine you and a group of friends. You all split the cost. You're only buying it because you want to Instagram it. Like, that's the whole reason. You just want to say that you got the Hello Kitty 
cantaloupe. So you and some friends take turns taking pictures of the yeah, cantaloupe, and putting you it all, on your feed. You all have a bite afterwards. But you don't have to tell your feed, like your followers, that you couldn't afford your own. Well, I'll tell you this right You're now. You're just sharing it. Uh, if whoever gets to post it first, they got to pay for two shares. Oh, they get to, <laughs> they get to do extra. Because they're the ones that are going to get you and know a little more traction on that. This isn't that side of your budget if you live on a budget. This counts as your groceries. Like, this is your food. Shut up. <laughs> Get you out. just spit a Get little out. more on fruit, <laughs> which you're supposed to. It's healthy. If you missed out on the next riot moment when it originally aired, you don't know how lucky you are. You're listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. What are your plans for Labor Day weekend? That's coming up. That would be two weeks from Friday is when we'll be staring down Labor Day weekend. That's exciting, right? Mm -hmm. I'm DJing a wedding that night. There you go. This is on Labor Day or just that weekend? Friday night. It is the first weekend, or excuse me, the first uh, thing that I have DJed since January. Everything now. I had bookings all, but they all they all canceled, postponed or canceled. Yeah, but this one in particular, they're like, nope, we're still getting married. Smaller crowds, and they still want (laughs) you. Still getting married. Yay. So it's still happening. So like, yeah, like DJing a wedding that weekend. But uh, according to uh, the uh, TSA, 6 million Americans are going to be flying Labor Day weekend with 1 million people set to go to Orlando, Florida. That's the place. Wow. Wait, is it Orlando or is it just Florida? might be just Florida in general. Uh, But anyway, 1 million people from around the nation are headed to Florida for Labor Day weekend. I wonder what's the number then for previous years. I assume that's down. Is it must it? be. I, you know, At least the flying number. According to this article, they say that's below 2019 numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they also say that when you look at the number of people are traveling, which that number is down, it's a much higher percentage of people that are traveling that are going to Florida versus another what place it normally would be i got gotcha. yes. you mm-hmm. so uh the the hot spots or four hot spots for this travel let's not use the word hot spots bad choice yeah, bad, i don't think um, so let's popular see. destinations there it is. travel better, destination that better. feels better doesn't okay. it <laughs> florida arizona nevada the caribbean in some of those places, I still think you're supposed to quarantine when you come back from, depending on what sti- you know what state you're actually in. That's what they're saying. Oh, okay. You get a long vacation then. So, but again, that depends on which state you live in, and then where you're going, and then when in, in the you know. It's all going to be different. So different, Nikki. So different. I don't have any plans to fly or go anywhere. I'm still, still saving that. I think for Christmas time. I still have plans to travel to Oregon. Or Thanksgiving. So that's the that's the cut that's the point where we all need to figure this out by. Yes. <laughs> um I mean I can't have that travel completely wreck my whole life. Now my Caribbean trip, yeah, it can wreck my whole life. He's whatever. going on a cruise in January. Yeah, like fine, whatever. That can get canceled or what, rescheduled. Whatever. But like the Oregon trip, if it's gonna wreck my life, I can't go. Like forget it. I we'll figure it out. Right? You know, we'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. So, like, if it was a trip and then you still had to quarantine around it, then that's just not possible. I don't. I don't yeah, I, I hear you over you there. Know what? Here's where I'm at. <laughs> I don't want to answer that question yet. I don't have to answer it yet. You have until November. <laughs> I mean, there there are so many things, including that comet, that could happen between now and then. Let's leave it open. Let's you just leave it as we'll see. Yeah, let's put a we'll see on that. I like it. Let's see. <laughs> Are people really still listening to the riot? You don't have work to do or laundry to fold or literally anything else to do? The Riot Radio U. Broadway has been hit especially hard by COVID-19 because as New York City was, of course, a hot spot. Mm -hmm. But then it was also shut down mostly for tourism. Yeah. And Broadway's been closed for a long time and it's not opening up until next year. It goes dark. So it's goes dark. it's out. Yeah. And that if you've never been to New York for a Broadway show, I can tell you that man, a lot of tourism, a lot of people. When you're in the Broadway district, like you 
forget about it. Like, there's people everywhere. There's so many lines of people that you start asking people which line they're in. Oh, you don't even know? No. <laughs> because, because there's so many productions going on. There's lines everywhere. You're like, which line is this? This, the, this, you know, whatever. And yeah. now all of that's gone. So it won't return until next year, like you mentioned. It won't. And so uh, there is uh, quite a few people working to try to keep things there so that when things reopen, they'll be there. One of those people is Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yeah. Nikki, he is famously known for The Phantom of the Opera. That's right. But he also has such hits as Avita, Sunset Boulevard, Jesus Christ Superstar, and I need Many one more. Many others. Cats! Cats. Well, Not the after movie. that Not movie, the movie, yeah, everybody's kind of just, Not that's the, the last one you have to mention. So at 72 years old, he uh, Instagrammed a picture of himself in the hospital getting an experimental COVID-19 vaccine. Really? Hashtag save our stages. Wow. Which is great that he's willing to do that. It, you just tend to not see people in their 70s do that. That's what I thought. But that's good, especially since so many older people have been hit the hardest with this. Yeah. So uh, he, when I said, oh, I save our stages. And then he said, I will literally do anything I lost the quote. Well, he basically, oh, here it is. I'll do anything to get theaters large and small back. open again and actors and musicians back to work. Certain industries, they said that there's no bringing it back until there's a vaccine or something that is more uh, concrete with a, a help to it. Something. Yeah. Oh, good for him. Wow. So I forgot he was, uh, he is older. Say what you were going to no. say. Say it. <laughs> I say I it. didn't know. <laughs> I forgot he was still alive. No, I didn't That's even say exact- that. Yes, no, but yes. sometimes, you know, it's it's the classic hits that he's done <laughs> that are older. <laughs> you tend to forget. Nikki, I want to his his later stuff has not been as popular. Worst of the Riot podcast. Have you been keeping up with Adele's weight loss? Oh, Adele. Okay. Yeah, uh, we saw that. She had some incredible weight loss, but she's that lost, was about it. She lost a lot of weight, and now she's out there telling people how. What was she saying? How? You know, that's every time somebody loses weight, how'd you do it? <laughs> that's amazing. How? What? How? Well, you're hoping she'll tell you is something very simple, and it's just the magic thing that you missed out on doing. And when she tells you, it'll work for you. Well, Nikki, I looked it up. She is... Uh, She's out there doing interviews, talking about it. Uh, actually, she tweeted about it, so it wasn't an interview. Uh, heck, maybe it was Instagram. I don't know. She social media did it. Um, and it's called, she read a book called Untamed. Stop pleasing, start living. Nice. That's- Stop pleasing, <laughs> start living. Is it a podcast or a book or what no, is it? No, it's a book it's a by book? Glennon Doyle. And I was like, oh, I want to learn. I want to be untamed. So, I want to stop pleasing and start living. I'm sure the book has had some increase in sales now. Okay, but here we go. It, it's packed with incredible insight about what it means to be a woman today. Yeah, you could totally jump into that. It'll work for guys, too, I'm sure. Untamed will liberate women. But who was the author? It sounded like a guy. Glenn and... I thought so, too. Is it not? Um, I think that... Like in Scotland, you can be named Glennon, and it's still... It's a girl. It's a female name. Not like it matters. Name whatever. It's fine. (laughs) Doesn't matter at all. Doesn't matter. (laughs) It's fine. When I first saw it, I thought, oh, I I did think it was a guy, but I guess we're wrong. Mm -hmm. So we look at our lives and wonder, wasn't it all supposed to be more beautiful than this? We quickly silence the question, telling ourselves to be grateful, hiding our discontent even from ourselves. Mm. And this is, I mean, we're just right here at the beginning. This is, I mean, already life-changing. Do you feel thinner? Um, Well, Nikki, here's the thing is, oftentimes we're eating to cover Ah. some things. So if we start living and stop Wait, what they, this is what they'll say. The weight just comes off. It just comes off. Because you've addressed the core issue. Yeah, like it'll it'll fix it all. And then you don't really have to go work hard at losing the weight because it just happens. I've got bad news. I've read it all. Doesn't I've work. I've seen it all. But it worked for her, which is good. <laughs> well, come and see me next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. Where's the book at it? Making sure it stays off. That's the hardest thing. That's retamed by retamed by that's Obadiah. That's the follow up. Yeah, that's the follow up like, book. <laughs> when you realized all that other stuff was a lie, uh-huh. you're back to discontent. <laughs> the riot radio. You. 
Hey, listen, sometimes when life hands you lemons, you need to make a lemon squeeze. Ooh. A lemon, a lemon freeze. <laughs> uh, or uh, in this case, when your circus can't function the way it's supposed to, you need to sell lion poop. Uh, I don't feel like that works the same way as the lemonade thing. It does. I don't know if it does. You know, Nikki, it's a, it's a high-level concept. It's very uh, similar. So what are they doing? Well, here's the deal. There's a circus in Germany, the Krone Circus. And as you're no doubt aware, things have been hard. Yeah, circuses you know, are circuses not. circuses and people and stuff. Not probably still open right now. And so what they have been doing is uh, they've been packaging up lion poop in jars. You can buy a jar. Why? I'll tell you why. Is it for like gardening or yes. like, like coffee or something? They or? say that if you take that lion uh, remnants, yeah. leftovers, and you spread them in your garden, other animals won't come anywhere near yeah, your but garden. Like your friends and family won't, your neighbors. I'm sure it's it's something. I don't know. But you're right. Yeah, all the animals will think, oh, my gosh, there's a lion here. <laughs> Why is there a lion, a lion here? Oh, my God. This is a neighborhood. We have never had a lion. I moved out to the suburbs to get away from this crap. <laughs> and now I smell a lion. <laughs> Dog so maybe is, that is freaking out. Maybe that is then good. If you are into gardening, it would save your stuff. But not animals. You're not You're not an animal lover, Nikki. You're, you're done with that. Hey, if you appreciate the animal, you appreciate everything the animal does. Everything. So you're going to have to appreciate this. How much does it go for? Uh, I don't know. I I know what you're like. Well, I I don't. I don't know. Let me. How click. much does lion poop in a jar sent from Germany cost for someone who wants it? It's a pop up store that they're running called Mister Poo. Ew. Um, oh, it's, they're making it viral. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? It does. Doesn't it doesn't say. say. And I don't know if it's just not. You know. Hitting the tra- the translation's not coming through, but I got I got nothing for you. Hey, I just Googled Mr. Pooh pop up store and it pulled up a party city. So <laughs> just, and a hot topic. <laughs> oh, now if I look in the news section, there's something else. Oh, uh, come on. I love the fact that hot topics like, oh yeah, we're a hot topic. We got Mr. Pooh. That's right. Who doesn't? Well, you know why? Because Mr. Pooh emojis Mm -hmm. which they're actually using as part of their pop-up display Uh, but you can come in buy some lion poop and put around your garden well i'm glad that they've come up with a alternative and still making money for the circus i guess as long as it's a nice circus there's so many mean ones so we don't want that if it's a mean one yeah and it's hard to know till you till you get there so you get there and then it's too late because you've already bought the ticket and you're like no it's bad this is a mean place (laughs) The worst of the riot is over, but the fun can keep going. Hey, I saw you checking out my goods. Check the riot blog or stalk us on social media. You want to sample them? A little try before you buy us? Through riot.radiou.com. Riot!